2020 meeting of the East Island Meadow Planning Board to order. Um, so with respect to master our law, I'd like to point out that we are being audio and visually recorded by LCAT and I need to ask if there's anyone else in the room who is recording this meeting and if so, would you please state your name? Hearing none, I'd like to call the roll. So we have in attendance Jonathan Torsha, George Kingston, myself Russell Denver, and Tide Richards. So the first order of business is the approval of the minutes. So I would like to request that we take no action on the minutes this evening. Um, so I'm going to hear a second on that. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 So I'd like to get a motion to take the item number five out of order so we can hear it first. So I'd, like to, I'd like to make that motion. I'll second it. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Clerk, would you call the item? Thank you very much. Uh, case site 2020-1, East Long Meadow Veterans Memorial request by applicant for site plan review for construction of a proposed Veterans Memorial located at the East Long Meadow Council on Aging, 328 North Main Street, Assessor's Parcel ID 13-A1-0 and an overall 3.74 <coughs> plus or minus acre site in the commercial zoning district. The applicant is Mary McNally, Town Manager, Representative Terry Glusco, Chairman, East Long Meadow Veterans Memorial Committee, 328 North Main Street, East Long Meadow. So would anyone who's the petitioner like to come forward and tell us about the project? Sure. We'll leave it, Terry. <laughs> Well, thank you for the accelerated <coughs> opening here. Um, Happy to. My name's Terry Glusco, Chairman of the East Long Meadow Veterans Memorial Committee. Other committee members, all veterans, here tonight are Robert Wallace, Tom O'Connor, Thomas Gore, Edward Brown, and two other members who are absent, Don Gamash and Walter Esposito. The mission of our Veterans Committee is to construct a Veterans Memorial in East Long Meadow at 328 North Main Street in front of the Senior Center. A Veterans Memorial to honor those East Long Meadow veterans who answered the call to arms when their country needed them. And especially dedicated to those East Long Meadow veterans who will never return home to this community, of which there are 19, beginning World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, and the War on Terror. It will be a place also where the families of these veterans can go and reflect on the sacrifice of their loved ones. And once constructed, this Veterans Memorial will become the community focal point for Memorial Day and Veterans Day services. Perhaps our strongest advocate is Carolyn Brennan, director of the Senior Center, who is in the audience this evening. She's also a consultant on our committee. The planning for this memorial actually began in September 2017 and after receiving our 501c3 status and our certificate of solicitation from the Massachusetts Attorney General's office, our first fundraiser was on October the 12th of 2018. Since that time we have had numerous fundraisers and have received donations from individuals as well as the business community. We also received $100,000 in funding from the state of Massachusetts and are on our own through fundraising efforts. We've raised a little over $50,000. Some may consider this a bridge too far, but the anticipated cost could reach $475,000 and it might even be a little less than that. But when you look at the depicted rendering, our architect, Architecture Liel of East Long Meadow, is proposing. It is not only exciting, but conveys a memorial which truly honors these veterans and one which the committee we know will embrace and fully support. Our committee hopes this planning board will favorably consider the Veterans Memorial Project being presented here this evening. East Long Meadow is a Purple Heart town who always acknowledges and supports its veterans. On behalf of our entire Veterans Memorial Committee, I thank you for your time and all your considerations. Thank you. 
Okay. Would you like to go through the project? Yes, yeah, cool. if you don't mind, uh, I'll just. Uh, uh, Kevin Rothschild Shea, uh, president of Architecture Yellow. I'm here with Rick Morris, our lead uh, architect and designer on the project. And we have Bill Cannon, our landscape architect, in the audience. So uh, uh, Terry's a tough act to follow. Uh, we're honored uh, as a residence uh, office located in town to be able to participate with these fine people. Uh, and we're really excited to present, uh, present this project. I think uh, uh, Rick will do a great job, and I can be the wingman and help flip some boards and images around. And I'll just jump in and out as we need to. Thank you. Great, thanks, Kevin. So uh, the memorial we're proposing, which you may have seen, it's circulated a bit since we last debuted it in the last year. Uh, but uh, the location is in front of the existing senior center. This parcel in front of the center, uh, which we are uh, landscaping and uh, installing the memorial therein. The memorial consists of a, a star-shaped monument, which is composed of a series of stones of varying heights. Um, and there's some subtleties to the way we work the geometry. They, they slope gently from the entry point up towards the, uh, the landscaped area. Uh, and then each segment represents a conflict. Um, so the way that we designed it is that uh, as you approach it along a, a main path, uh, this path takes you into the memorial. It descends slightly, uh, 17 inches to be precise. So the plaza between the stones is, is depressed a little bit from the main uh, grade point. And this uh, serves as kind of a, a, a means of separate, a little cue of separation between yourself and the, uh, the immediate surroundings. It's also conveniently bench height. So we have various places around the monument where you can sit um, and, uh, and look into the plaza area. Uh, at the central point, there is an elevated stone which has the honor roll, uh, which has uh, currently been um, installed and, and demounted, but we would take the uh, information from that honor roll and be inscribed in that central stone. Uh, and this creates a small gathering place where ceremonies can be held. Uh, the backdrop to the monument is a series of flagpoles. Uh, we have the, uh, the divisions of the military forces and then the uh, three other flagpoles with the state flag, United States flag, Purple Heart, um, and the um, um, CMIA. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> uh, um, so as you proceed through the monument, we've got the crosswalk, <laughs> which is a central access to the uh, senior center itself, and then we have um, a series, an LA of trees, which culminates in uh, the uh, Battle Cross, which is the monument to the fallen soldier. So we've also, uh, Bill's office produced a, uh, a rendering showing you the uh, a perspective view across the monument with the senior center at, at the rear. Um, so that's uh, just a quick tour through the, uh, through the monument itself. Since the time we submitted our site plan application, we've received some updated uh, electrical site plan information and photometrics. On the uh, topic of photometrics, uh, you know, we've given a great deal of consideration to how we will light the memorial. That's part of the reason why we have this updated information. Um, and that's been a common, a common question. So uh, nighttime, it will have a, a, a very dull glow. Uh, we're lighting the paths to one foot candle, which will allow it to be navigable um, in the nighttime hours. We're, it's not designed to be a nighttime destination, but it is designed to be visible and present at night, and someone could safely walk through it. Um, so that's um, this packet here, which I can uh, leave with the, the board. Yeah. The black one with the rendering in there might be a good one to share, Rick. Right? Yeah, there is a photometrically derived rendering, which is yeah. could be helpful. So with that, I'll take any okay. questions. Yeah, I'll first bring it to the board. Anyone on the board have any questions? And it looks like a great idea. Um, we did receive comments from the police department that they want no parking signs there. And since they're the ones who decide where no parking signs go, I suggest that we, uh, Connie, that we send them a note saying that we agree with them. And if they would like to ask DPW to install them, they can do so. Because there's plenty of, plenty of parking at the, at the center. So. So this is a, a public hearing, so I'd like to open it to anyone in the audience who'd like to speak about this issue. Yes, sir. Uh, Ralph Page, 306 Prospect. 
just a couple questions. The trees that are in the front, um, what are they? Are they going to be aspens? Are they going to be um, poplars? What are we looking at for trees? And what's the, the walkway and all going to be constructed? Is that going to be a concrete walk, paver walk? Um, Great questions. Yeah, I'll have I'll have our landscape architect address them. I would love to have him present. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, to answer the question regarding the, the pavers and everything else, as you can see by the colored rendering over here, the yep. red indicates what what we want to install as a decorative paver. Okay, okay like a brick paver, yep. a brick size, four by eight, roughly. Um, this color is kind of like a terra that we've shown on the plane. is kind of a terracotta color. I, you know, it, it may vary depending on what we what we finally choose uh, on the exact shape. Um, and then, as I understand it, there's a there's a real desire um, to use those pavers to get them engraved, donor engraved. So that's a that's a great it's it's a it's a great philanthropic effort uh, that we're trying to participate in and, and helping fund some of the uh, the pavement here. Uh, the lighter color, the yellowish color, is concrete, so that will help kind of uh, uh, contrast with the color uh, of the of the papers. Um, you know, you know, concrete comes in various shades and everything else. So we're going to be very careful about what, what kind of shade we kind of introduce into that. But um, it will it will be concrete and it'll have score joints in it. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so as far as the landscaping is concerned, um, that, that was a real challenge for me because I, I was really concerned about choosing a, a, a species here that was not going to necessarily dominate the, the front parcel, uh, get overscaled with the building, and to kind of keep it within a certain scale uh, so that that doesn't become a uh, uh, kind of a uh, maintenance nightmare or anything else. So I, I went with American hornbeam, which is the native tree. It's about 25 feet to 30 feet high and about the same width. Uh, I thought that was a really nice height to kind of grab a hold of here and everything else. Even like it, it's a native tree, like red maples would, would even still be too high and everything else. So we, I thought this was going to be kind of a nice, uh, serve as a nice relationship um, uh, to the sidewalk. So we'll stay at, it, it's uh, envisioned that it'll be, stay in a nice pedestrian scale for the walk through the alley, uh, turn culminating uh, at the Battle Cross. Um, the Battle Cross culminates in a little bit of a sitting area, a wide sitting area where we're gonna, where we'll have some uh, 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 granite blocks for sitting on, it'll be the same material as the monoliths out in the plaza, the monument plaza. And um, so that we wanted to create a little bit of privacy in that area uh, from this main street, where we want to put up a hedge on two sides of the main street and, and the side street side of it. Uh, so um, we've chosen um, uh, a uh, Texas a Japanese U type of plant that stays really horizontal and is a good edge type of plant. So that will be maintained as kind of like with strong architectural lines and be maintained as a, as a hedge about five feet high. We don't want it to get too high, but we want it high enough so that when you sit down on the benches, you don't have to kind of like, you know, fight your thoughts with the traffic and everything else that might go on, uh, that is going along on Main Street, North Main Street and everything else. Uh, there will be some flower beds. So I've, I've chosen uh, some daylilies, and I wanted them white for the purity reason and everything else. Um, that will be a nice contrast with the other green hedge as well. Um, but we've kept the landscape kind of simple, but we wanted to kind of really make it kind of part of the whole, uh, the, the whole uh, kind of procession walking through the, the plaza and the, the promenade and culminating at the battle cross. It looks beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience like to address the board on this issue? Hearing none. I just had two kind of quick questions. Uh, the, so yeah, I was, the, the, the uh, 
the play, play pavers that people paid for. So where are those going to be located again? Along the uh, the main procession oh, okay. through the market. Yeah, see the red color that you yeah. see on the map there. Mm -hmm. So the the the, the red will be the decorative pavers, oh, and we've kind of laid the pattern out of, of that red to kind of really uh, be in sync with the, the monoliths in the in the plaza, yeah. and uh, we wanted a kind of a strong <coughs> axial relationship to uh, the battle cross, um, so that that kind of bisects the site. We didn't want to do, and, and we're we're proposing a new sidewalk from the front entrance of the senior center out to North Main Street and we wanted that a different color contrasting color so that will be concrete. How many pavers are there currently that have been purchased? purchased. We haven't done any purchasing well, yet. Well, so people that are... 52. They're just starting. 52. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so they're just yeah. getting 52 already? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then who would, just my last question, who would be in charge of maintaining it? Would that fall under um, the senior center or the town? DPW. DPW. But no, it looks very beautiful, very nice tribute. And I just have one question on the lighting. So will the lighting be geared toward the memorial or how far oh, how far into the street or the sidewalk? Well, you'll notice uh, on the photometrics that with that one foot candle with a working operating um, illumination, it falls off to zero very, very fast. So it really is concentrated around the, the monuments it. themselves. Yeah. And the walk. Maybe if you could open it up so that the camera can see that. Yeah. I have one question as well. Uh, can you come up? You have a uh, press plaza there. What's your drainage and has DPW reviewed it? <clears throat> so you want me to speak to that, right? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. Um, so obviously, with with the the uh, depressed area, that is a lower gradient than the surrounding uh, uh, grade. And um, I had a little bit of a, a, a tricky test to try to figure out how to drain that and everything else. What's shown on the plans is that uh, within this, uh, uh, this five-sided figure in here, we're going to install a four-inch or six-inch wide decorative trench grade. Um, that will kind of circumvent uh, around this piece of concrete right in here. And uh, we wanted to really carefully work it in with the, the, the pavement pattern and the pavement design. Uh, it's a trench drain. We'll have a, 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 a trench drain below it, so all the water will fall in there from this plaza area. And uh, it will be collected by a drain pipe to a manhole that we've kind of located on this area here. It's shown on the plans. Um, it's, it's kind of a clean out manhole where any um, uh, the built up debris within the plaza that gets washed down in it will get deposited in this manhole. The manhole has, has a four foot deep sump in it so that it will collect some of the sediments in there. So periodically they, it needs to be cleaned out. Um, so that will collect the sediments prior to discharging uh, out from the manhole. What we would like, and that was part of uh, a request uh, for approval, is to connect into, uh, for that outlet from this area here to connect into a catch basin that's located out uh, on North Main Street in this area right here. Uh, we tried to, I, I looked at the catch basin out in the middle of the existing parking lot try to connect that out of there, it was too shallow. So this gradient is much more advantageous to us to, to work out um, how we could kind of drain this this uh, this uh, sunken area right here. So we're, we're hoping that given what we want to do with the sediment control and everything else, that we can kind of tie into that catch basin. We tie into the uh, back of the catch basin and we'd be high enough so that we'd, we would allow the, the, the flow to continue exiting uh, the catch basin uh, unimpeded and uh, we'll, obviously it will be crossing the existing sidewalk that we'll have to demo a certain part of that and we'll, we'll re replace that with new concrete sidewalk to match the existing. Have you reviewed that with Department of Public Works because they're the ones that are going to give the approval for tying into the stormwater system? No, we, yeah, we met with, uh, we've had preliminary meetings with planning, the town engineer, 
and uh, I think we've uh, infiltrated in that underground uh, as it uh, exits our plaza to the drain through the drain system. And the, the plan that's proposed, we reviewed and I, uh, I think uh, solidly endorsed and supported by the town engineer. Okay, because I know they're very sensitive because of the new stormwater regulations, and obviously, I hate to see you install everything and then them say no, you can't tie in. No, we, we so, yeah, they were right. at. Um, they were with us. Uh, okay. We, we didn't go through the full roundtable because we informally met and they were uh, on board and the other okay. department's heads had all chimed in. But uh, yeah, we critically met with the town engineer. Okay. Uh, I don't remember the gentleman's name, sorry. But uh, Ian, they've seen the final drawings, which were a direct result of that preliminary uh, okay, review meeting. Yeah, if, if there's any final tweaking that we have to do with some inverts or some elevations, I can certainly work with the town engineer on fine-tuning that if we have to. Um, any other comments from the, from the audience? Hearing none, I'd like to have a motion to close the public hearing. I, so moved. I have some questions. Okay. Okay. Um, the, regarding the trees, I'm not familiar with those. Is that in the pear family? Like a Bradford pear kind of a tree, looking tree? No, it's not. It's, okay, because uh, I was trying to find one, a picture of it in here uh, while you were talking, and I... Uh, Carpinus. C-A-R... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> C-A-R, yep. i got to throw you for a loop now. The Carpinus. C-A-R-P-I-N-U-S. Yep. Okay, or you could or you could type in just American Horned Bean. Yeah, that's what I did, and it kept coming up with some kind of a pear version of the American Horned Bean. Yeah, you no, know, yeah, you know uh, there are a couple of trees that are out there on the site right now. Um, and, and a couple of them are uh, the calorie pairs and everything else. Um, so they're in they're in conflict with our design, so they're coming down. There's, and there's also yeah, I'd like to see some real. I mean, we can't tell you what to do, but we'd, I'd like to see some real creativity yeah. there. I mean, a real you know, instead of something like bread for pear or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the bread for pear yeah, is you know considered saying. invasive. We yeah, you know, yeah we don't. Yeah. Well, it's you know, not. It's something real nice. I fought with this from a professional standpoint and everything else. There, there was a little bit of time where I don't want to, you know, make it a big story, but there was a time when calorie pears were just hot on everybody's list, and they planted rows of them around on, on streets and everything else. Bad choice. Right, I agree. Bad choice, and uh, you know, for for a number of reasons and everything else. Uh, so, you know, that would have been the furthest uh, kind of a. Selection from my standpoint, everything else. Um, I, I'm yeah, kind of like sold on this uh, this uh, uh, species in here for at the reasons I stated. Do you have another question? No, no. Okay. Motion to close. Second. The motion made and second to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Both say nay. So bring it back to the board. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Motion to approve. I will second that. We have a motion made and seconded to approve this item. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say nay. So it passes. Congratulations. And thank you to everyone who's been involved in this project. It's really outstanding work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for the treats. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm Come on, do you need to go? You need to go. You to go. You need to go. You to go. You uh, we'll talk about it later. I got some reading to do. And, and next time. It would not overpower, but it would be like I'm going to get Mr. Clerk, you have all, uh, item I need an agenda. Item Thank one. you very much. You got it. Uh, SPRW 2000.
SPRW 2019-44 Home Office Request by Applicant for a Site Plan Review Waiver for a Home Office at 241 Pease Road Assessor's Parcel ID 43-21-0 at 1.6 plus or minus acre site residential double A's district The applicant is Pollyanna uh, Borello 241 Pease Road He's on Meadow Mass It is continued from December 17th And there's been a request by the petitioner to continue it uh, until our meeting in March, our March 24th meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have a motion to? We don't need to okay. move this one. Okay. To continue the use. Okay. Good. Uh, SPRW 2020-6 uh, uh, Pursue Wellness. Request by applicant for site plan uh, waiver for a health and wellness business at 124 Shaker Road, Suite B. Assessor's parcel ID 28A-3-69 and point four seven plus or minus acre site in the business zoning district. The applicant is Cynthia Kennedy, 124 Shaker Road, Suite B, East Long Meadow, Mass. Is the petitioner here? Hi. Hi, come on up. Oh, you can just, if, two, if both of you are coming up, just pull another chair up, okay. please. You can go up. You can go up to the table. Oh, all the way to the table. I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> we don't fool around. <laughs> okay. So we're we're kind of just interested in knowing a little bit about the business, what your hours of operation are going to be, what the business is, um, that type of thing. So. Okay. Well, I am a family nurse practitioner. I've had a practice uh, treating women for over 20 years and part of Bay State OBGYN um, until about a year and a half ago <clears throat> when I started uh, looking at functional medicine and integrative approach to health. And uh, my practice will be open to all ages, um, looking at very simplistic things like helping people learn how to navigate their stress, uh, diet, exercise, all kinds of simplistic things that really are not being taken care of by the primary care area because they don't have the time to do it. So by looking at a holistic approach and the people who come to me, whether they have you know chronic sinusitis or gut issues or menopausal problems or whatnot. We'll be looking at it in that in that aspect and look and looking at you know their emotional aspects as well okay your anticipated hours of operation I would say they're probably um, going to be more like a nine to six or nine to seven okay six seven days a week um, I would say Monday through Friday for the most part okay are you in the is that going to be the new professional building that was just Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's uh, Dan Garvey's Dan building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So. Any questions from the board? Um, the only thing we had was the coming from the health department on this one. Yeah. That uh, if you're going to be selling any products, any food products, you need to get a right. license from them. Right. Yeah. I already settled that. Um, right. Yeah. There's no products that will be. Okay. So. I send people up the street to the juice bar. Right. We just want to get that comment in there because we did yeah. get the thing from, from health. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 A motion to approve? So moved. I'll second that. The motion made. Uh, no. The motion made to approve and second it. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 No opposed say nay. Passes. All Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good luck. Okay. So what do I do with all my paperwork now? Just come back in tomorrow and I'll walk you through it. Awesome. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. SPRW 2020-7 Top Mechanical Service L, uh, Limited Liability Company request by applicant for site plan review waiver for an HVAC service office at 75 North Main Street, Assessor's Parcel ID 26-146-0 and .341 plus or minus acre site in Commercial Zoning District. The applicant is Raymond uh, Brainerd, 900 Riverdale Street, Suite 306 West Springfield. Are there, no, how are you? Good. Good. So let's, let's just start with the same basic questions. Uh, what's the business going to be? Hours of operation? It's uh, just a heat and air conditioning repair service. Uh, we're just basically renting an office at 75 North Main. Okay. And hours uh, figure 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. But we do well, most of it is from our houses because that one takes the trucks home. So it's basically mobile service. 
So there's really no nothing that's going to be yeah. parked there overnight or anything okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. Are you? Do you live in town? I live in town. Okay. And you you, you have what one one truck that you take home? Yes. Okay. And you get that garaged? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. But uh, that 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 does happen. Okay. You you. I understand now that uh, we have to have our letter trucks in the in the park in the garage. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Just making sure that. That's not really part of this application, but you know, yeah. to make that clear. Well, I, yeah, I know about the town ordinance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be renting out the whole building, or is it rented out by anybody uh, else? Small just, small just small office. Just a small office. office. Small. Yeah. It, it's it's just an office for us to meet with customers to yeah. fill out contracts yeah. and such when they. Yeah, buy so we're basically equipment. just moving. We've been in business for yeah. seven years now, yeah, so we're just moving to the side middle. Okay. Oh, great. Good. Good. Welcome. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? A motion. Motion to approve. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say nay. It's all yours. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome Thank to the council. Welcome. Good, good, good luck. Good luck. Good move. Case SD P 2019 01 Shelby w. and Silver Fox Lanes. Um, request by applicant for preliminary subdivision approval for two. Lot subdivision located at 3.81 plus or minus site located at Shelby Lane, 14 Silver Fox Lane, Sessor's Parcel ID 65-16-5 in the Residential Zoning A District. Applicant is Gillespie um, uh, Cupola and Vanessa Cupola, 14 Silver Fox, East Long Meadow, Mass. Uh, this continued from December 17th, January 21st. So there's been a request from um, Mr. Capua to continue this uh, for the, at least 30 days. Anyone have any opposition to this? No. Continuance? That's fine. Okay. We make a motion to continue to the second meeting in March. Oh, the second, second meeting. We'll second meeting. 30, 30, okay. 30 days. Yeah. Do I have a second? I'll second that. What's the date on that? 24. 24th. Okay. Okay. So motion made and second to continue it until the 24th of March. All in favor say aye. 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 No opposed say nay. So that item passes. Uh, item six. Okay. Case SDD 2019-04 modification of de definitive subdivision subdivision plan for Hidden Ponds Estates. Request by applicant for release of lots from covenant in substitution of surety. By irrevoc irrevocable letter of credit, applicant is L. Joyce, Rosebud Builders, LLC, P.O. Box 79, East Long Meadow, Mass. And this is continued from December 17th to January 21st. Connie. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So uh, one change, it was not an irrevocable letter of credit. The applicant brought in cash. So uh, based on the cost estimate that was provided for the completion of the subdivision known as Hidden Ponds, Mr. Joyce brought in uh, checks in the amount of $399,036. Uh, which um, he would like to substitute and release all of his lots from Covenant. And this amount meets with the approval of the Department of Public Works. And all his other paperwork is in order? All of his paperwork is in order for the planning board. Okay. Anyone have any questions? What's the progress on the project? Has there been progress made on the project? I was there today. What does um, it look like? There's dirt everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, uh, it looks like the roads are in. Uh, both cul-de-sacs look, look like they're in. Um, one of the cul-de-sacs has a big pile of dirt on it, but that could be probably removed very quickly. Um, lots of rock and piles no, all over the place, but no, no, I didn't see any foundations or houses. So, in order to yeah, it just occurred to me that yeah, he went. Okay. So, uh, is this a vote to authorize this? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll make a motion to release the covenant. So a second. I'll second that. The motion made and seconded to release the covenants. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed say nay. I'm sure he will be uh, very happy to, mm -hmm. to hear of his progress on that matter. So I do have um, the form for all of the planning board members to sign. Um, I don't have a notary public available 
So perhaps one of you could come by tomorrow and sign in the in, in front of the notary. If you remind me, I can do it. Yeah, all right. Me. That would be that be wonderful. Do you, actually, need, do you need all of us? No, just one. Oh, just one. We just okay. need one but one. In fact, actually, person. Russ could notarize my signature, could you? I could, but I'm listed there, and I think that would probably be a conflict. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. As another signer. So. Is there a notary in the house? Yeah. Okay. But right. we can. Yeah. Is there one at town hall? Yes, there is. Yeah. You yeah. you can all sign, and then when you come in tomorrow, I, I don't visit recommend the, that. No? No. Okay, so somebody declined from to sign signing today. You're, you're supposed to sign in front of the notary. Yes, that is true. Oh. You're making the notary lie. Yeah. The notary doesn't want to lie. That's true. So. That's true. So, but if you brought your license and said, I am who I am. But um, in any case, whoever is going to visit us tomorrow, don't sign. I have four originals. One goes to town clerk, one stays in our file, one goes to finance, and one goes to the applicant. Okay. Okay. So item seven, mixed use. Which town councilor would like to give the update? I appreciate that. Yes, <laughs> you fight over it. <laughs> Hi, good evening, Marilyn Richards. Hello. Um, we're forging ahead. We're actually dealing with two issues right now. One of them, um, Connie's working with PVPC on buttoning up language regarding the percentage of affordable housing. We want to do it legally correct. We want to make sure that the 10% that we're discussing of the 400, potentially 480 units um, meets the requirements to be countable for our regional fair share. So that's one piece that we're working on. The other piece is in looking at trying to balance the uses in the mixed use and not ending up with an overwhelming residential piece. We're, come, we're trying to come up with internet resistant commercial pieces. We're talking about, and I may have mentioned this, this last time, indoor storage, an indoor storage facility which would not exceed the maximum square foot, square foot requirement of the proposed bylaw, which I believe is 25,000 square feet. I would have to look at that again, but I believe that's what it is. We're talking about a building that's there for the um, use of perhaps apartment owners who move in, they've downsized, they have no place for their Christmas tree, their luggage, their bicycle. This indoor storage would be constructed um, in a manner suitable to the architecture of the entire development. And so that's one piece that we're looking at um, as a type of commercial use that would help them with, with a minimum of 15% 15, 15 and that's what we're talking about. I have a question. Sure. Would non-residents of the community be able uh, to the um, to the project also be using that storage? They could. They could. So basically, you're talking about they'd be erecting a self-storage facility within their project to be used for residents and non-residents. As any commercial piece would be within that within the project. However, uh -huh. the the this what they I mean, as I say, we're we're talking about it. Um, no decisions have been carved in stone as of yet. But, but we're trying to come up with something to um, encourage a more balanced and not a overwhelming residential development. Let me finish. Let You're me kidding, finish. I'm sorry. Um, we're talking about um, a structure that would be potentially climate controlled and secure from the standpoint that the building would be secure, the indoor units would be individually secured. And we, we have looked at renderings of similar type uses which look like their apartments. So, you know, that's, that's what we're talking about. Now, our meeting is next Tuesday at 10.30, right here. Um, you know, if you have any comments, and you had a question. Do you mind if I ask you no, a question? Um, as you know, this, this whole thing about mixed use has been um, something that I've been really thinking an awful lot about. We've talked about it a lot. When I think of self-storage, I don't think of it as a use that does anything for the project. It's basically just a building. Now, I, I understand they're going to make it look nice so it blends in with the project, and, and, and that's great. But at the end of the day, it's not like an office. It's not like a residence. It's not like a retail store. It's not like a service, which all brings something to the project. It's basically just a building that's going to stand there and do absolutely nothing. 
I just that occasionally someone's going to open up a door, take something out of their dresser, and shut the door again. Um, so um, when I think of mixed use, I think of things that are all going to contribute to the happiness of the um, project. And self storage to me just seems like a, st a, a stagnant building that just stands there and doesn't do anything at, at all. And, and, and I, I, by the way, I do I, agree that there should be self storage for the residents because I can clearly understand, oh, geez, I got too much stuff, I need a place to put it. I, I don't really have so much of a problem with that because I look at that as being a compliment to the existing owners. But to have outsiders come in and use a building that does nothing but just stand there just seems like a waste of a, a nice project and doesn't seem like it's really what we're trying to accomplish. And, and the struggle, and you know, feel free to, I mean, I've got other committee members here, they can certainly step in and comment. We're, we're struggling with those kinds of uses. I mean, we're looking at retail establishments that keep shuttering their doors. No, I understand. And so we're looking to try to come up with something that um, will create a balance. Um, you know, originally the proposal was for only five, minimum 5%, five right. and 95% residential, and the feeling was that we wanted to try to massage that a little bit to make more of a balance and look to different uses. Now, this is not carved in stone. This is still a work in progress. But um, I hear what you're saying. I just don't know what the answer is with trying to, uh, you know, come up with non-vacant stores. But I don't think that, I don't, I don't, I don't think a self-storage operation has anything to do with I, I, I would not call it retail. I would not no, put it no, in the category it does, or anything like that. But it does help meet the the fifteen percent to thirty yeah, percent but, requirement. You know, it, that it does, but but it doesn't also. Um, and the reason why I say it doesn't is because um, when I think of retail or something, service, whatever it is, it's something. It was something. It was a category that that I wanted to see. And this is just me. This is not the town talking. Um, that I wanted to see to make it um, a. Um, um, an interesting place to come and visit, and I don't look at a self storage for non residents to do anything. It, it, it doesn't do what retail does, it doesn't do what office does, it doesn't do what service does, it doesn't do what resident it does zip. Um, so it's almost like it's, it's almost like not even having it. So um, I wouldn't try to call it. Um, I wouldn't try to put it into a category like retail or service or something. And we're not. And, and, and I mean, but, but to right. try to meet the thresholds. We're trying to meet the, th the non-residential threshold. Right. But what I'm saying is I don't think that is a use that should be going against any of the non-residential categories because it doesn't do anything to enhance the project, whereas retail does and all the other stuff does that are within these boxes that we're trying to fill. Um, I'd, I'd rather make the box smaller than try to qualify it with a um, off-site self-storage unit. I would much rather see a Trader Joe's too, and we're told we can't have one. Yeah, I'm sure of that too. I agree. <laughs> so but, you know, we're, we're we're trying to come up with something that meets the needs of East Long Meadow first and foremost, um, but also balances the the project. And all, and all I'm trying to say is, and by the way, this is not directed at you. And I'm, oh, I know never, that. In general, um, all tough. I'm trying to say is it doesn't balance, in my opinion, it doesn't balance the project because it does absolutely nothing. I mean, it doesn't. It's just a building. I mean, it doesn't bring customers. It doesn't, no one says, hey, I want to go to that project because they have a self-storage unit. But they will say, oh, I, I want to go there because I, they have I, a bakery. I understand. Right. Or, they, or, 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 or something I'm like that. I'm being rescued jump here. In for, for one second here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Currently, self-storage is allowed in town. Um, so it was our committee's thought that if it's already allowed in town, they can use 25,000 square feet towards it. Let's make it look good. Um, let's turn around and say, the building's got to look like this. It's got to be inside storage. It can't be a separate unit outside, which they could have done. So I think what we're trying to do as a committee is to take what they were allowed adjust it slightly and say, I think this will fit this development better. Um, and like I said, with the increasing of the 5% to 15%, they were concerned about trying to fill 100,000 square feet. They asked about self-storage, and that's what started to bring everything up. They also understand, because they have it in another uh, facility, that a lot of people are downsizing, 
but they don't want to get rid of their grandmother's coffee right. table and they need a place to put it. So their, their thought process is most of these will be used by the people that are living that live there. there. Yeah, and, and, and but they head. have to open it up to the public. It's a mixed-use development. It's a separate business. So yeah, and all I'm saying is, um, I have no problem with the residents using it. Of course not. But non-residents is where my issue comes in because I'd rather take the hundred thousand that you're trying to fill and reduce it a little bit if you had to, and let that little bit of a reduction go to something that's going to be usable space. Then say, hey, here's something that's going to do nothing, but at least it qualifies for a box we're trying to fill, which is 100,000 square feet. I agree, 100,000 square feet or whatever the number is, big numbers to try to fill retail nowadays is definitely hard. And I would hate to put handcuffs on them to the point where they can't produce because it's impossible. But I wouldn't do it with self-storage. But even if we were at the 5%, they would still be allowed self-storage by our by law now because it's allowed in town. So okay. I'm just going to add one thing. Just an that. opinion. That's so okay. Yep. To me, by creating that space for non-residents, you're competing with existing businesses in town already. So it's the government actually um, creating, I think, kind of getting involved in something that they shouldn't be involved in. I can see the, the self-storage for the people who are there as being an amenity of the property, the residential property. I don't think we then need to um, allow the developer. To, I mean, we we are. That's what I want to say. I, I don't want to create competition with with entities that are already in business in town. So. But wouldn't I mean I'm I'm trying to follow that thought. Well, because we there are buildings, that, but we there have, are buildings. We have other restaurants in town. But 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 you're talking. Are you talking specifically about creating, allowing self storage in a multiple, in a multi use village district? It would be on the table of uses like all the other table of okay, uses. Okay. You, right. And so they can choose to perhaps u utilize that. They could, they could do a, f a recreational facility yeah. under special permit. They could do a pet grooming service if they choose. Um, there, are, There's a variety of issues. Most of them came from the table of uses that came from the original oh, okay. bylaw. Okay. So Thank you. it's not a guaranteed use, it's right. just a, a, a potential use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I, mean, I know I'm repeating itself, so I'll make it really quick, and I promise not to talk about it again tonight. <laughs> But, promise. <laughs> but I promise. But the reason why we want mixed use is because we want an interesting project. Absolutely. And yeah, absolutely, and I, I mean, we're all on the same page, no doubt about it. But I don't. So, so trying to use self storage for off premises um, residents doesn't create one ounce of interest to the project. I, I'd rather see if, they, if if we had to do this, which is not what I'm supporting. But if we had to add a couple more apartments to fill that extra space. I'd rather do that than have a, a building that does absolutely nothing, but it does peck away at a requirement. The requirements are there to add interest to the project, not just to put up a building that does nothing. And actually, I think because of the draw for apartments and people downsizing and having a, some, a facility that is climate controlled, whereas all of our other storage facilities, to my knowledge, are not. And it would be perhaps um, a use that would be advantageous to those of us who downsize, who come and live in an apartment, but want to put some of those pieces of special antique furniture in a place that they will not be subjected to the hot and cold of seasonal changes. Yeah, I know, but there's you know, only two guys in, in, in two months they could have a whole bunch of their units climate control that they really wanted to. Why don't you talk to them? <laughs> Thank you for the update. And anyway, I, thank you. No. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to get no, off on a tangent here, but... I appreciate what you have to say. You know, we're all in this together. Come Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, item 8, Mr. Clark. Uh, review and acceptance of revised special permit site plan review and site plan review waiver application forms. So I reviewed these and I thought they was very they were very well done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yep. I would agree. Great. Yeah. Let's start using them. For now the people won't have any problems. They know where the checklist is. <laughs> and I think that's terrific. Yeah. So do we need to take a motion on that or 
I would like you to motion all three. I would like you I'll to. I'll make a motion to uh, other three. Accept all three of them. Okay. Okay. So it's the changes to the special permit, site plan review, and site plan review waiver application forms. I will second that. So motion may and second to approve all three. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say nay. So just before we do our last item, so we received, all the members of the board received a invitation to a, what appears to be a groundbreaking, or no, a grand opening. Grand opening of the Esau Meadow Skilled Nursing Center scheduled for Wednesday, March 18th, 2020, from 4 to 6 p.m. And now our last item of business is a request to go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law 30A, Section 21A3, regarding potential resolutions of certain litigation pending against the town. So do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. I have a second, second it, so we need a roll call. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Torsha? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Kingston? Yes. Mr. Denver? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. And uh, we will not, we will return to open session for the purpose of adjourning, of adjourning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all.